This unelected class, people like Anthony Fauci, are destroying our nation. We want to save this country and that we want our country to be independent. Congressman Madison Cawthorn, why is it so important for you to be at a fight night of all things? Well, you know what? I think when I, when I won my election, it was with a mandate from my constituents that they wanted us to start playing offense. Uh, they've been so sick and tired of really, you know, our side of the aisle just kind of taking a back seat, allowing the other side to control the narrative. And, and you started to see that take actual effect in our, our this my entire generation. You know, my generation is the most medicated, most anxious, most depressed, most suicidal, uh, most drug addicted, most alcohol addicted generation the country's ever had and that is a depressing thing and I believe that there's freedom from that if you just have really you, you can rely on yourself self-reliance independence the ideas that our country was founded on and so the reason that I wanted to come here is because for too long I think the Republican Party has been considered you know the rich old white guy party and all that and it actually has some truth to it when you start looking at all the Republican Party meetings you look around and say well there's really no one that looks like me I mean I'm young I, I like to work out I've got tattoos and it's like but this entire people group that I think I'm a part of that I represent is of young independent you know really heavily libertarian people who just want to be left alone by the government and so it was really important to me to want to come here to start reaching out to that next people group so we can start playing offense for too long we started a lot ceding the ground to the other side where they've taken over all of our institutions whether it's Hollywood higher education uh, music all, all of these things but you start looking at you know the fighters people who perform in the UFC boxers all these people you know that is the definition of self-reliance it's you in a cage with another person you have to be able to rely on yourself and it brings an entire people group that I think are, are really uh, aligned with our ideology that we want to save this country and that we want our country to be independent. There's kind of like a two-sided coin to this though because I feel like with social media we have the TikTok generation, Instagram, everything is obviously out there. Um, you almost have this gaslighting from the media that that you know this is the way that they want it that they that they want kind of be ba to be ba babysat by their government that they want the government to serve them and do you feel like that is like a false narrative that's put out there um, or what are your thoughts on that Oh, absolutely. I mean, you, you, I think we look back at our history, you look at what happened to the Native Americans. Atrocities were committed against them because they decided to trust the government. They said, hey, turn your weapons in, the government will take care of you. I mean, look what's happened to their entire community. Uh, fortunately, our, the, our Native American community, especially in my district, the Cherokee, are, are a great be symbol of being able to rise up out of that. But this government babysitting has done detrimental damage to them for generations. And so the reason that you know I, I really want to be here is because there is this whole narrative and you start looking at the algorithms that TikTok's putting out for example you know in America to be able to go viral in North America and Europe uh, you know you want to learn some you know silly useless TikTok dance or whatever the new trend is but then you start looking at the, the algorithm in China and what they're encouraging their youth to do to be able to go viral and be popular it's things like science and engineering it's things like great oratory it's like being able to uh, speak well and inspire your generation that's what they're encouraging their youth to do and so they're playing warfare against us with the hearts and minds of our generation and say, hey, you know what, it, just go out and have fun, be happy, and you know the government will take care of all the big bad issues. Well, let me tell you, every single time there is a central planner government that's tried to make the decisions for every single person in America. I mean, you look at the USSR, you look at Venezuela, you look at North Korea, it turns out so poorly for the citizens. And so, you know, I, I think that, you know, especially this fighter culture, it's one that's saying, hey, you know what, I don't want to be babysit by the government because I'm going to make my own way. I'm going to pull myself up by the bootstraps, and I'm going to save this nation on my own behalf. At the same time, there's a lot of people that are frustrated with those that are supposed to be representing us. We're at a fight night. We want fighters. We want heroes. What are you doing and what do you think some of your colleagues um, are doing to truly represent the people and, and inspire and make change? Well, I have bad news on that. There's not many people who are actually up there working for the people. I mean, most people get elected as great patriots. Uh, but once they get to Washington, D.C., they get co-opted by kind of the establishment up there, and they start chasing this next echelon of power, and they want to be invited to all the right cocktail parties and all these things, and so, oh, well, I've got to, you know, vote for this, and it's strategic, and the, the common people don't understand the, the legislative process. Uh, that That's asinine. I mean, there are a lot more complexities than people realize, but working on behalf of the people is actually quite simple. I think that's why you see people like Jim Jordan, Marjorie Taylor Greene, myself, really rising to a, a level of, you know, uh, importance and notoriety among the American people even though we're not in leadership we haven't been there for so long and this is why I think we need term limits on Congress 
uh, because you know you have people that have been serving in Washington for longer than I've been alive. And you know, uh, once you do that, you get so many skeletons in your closet. People are able to uh, bully you and say, "Well, hey, if you don't do what we want you to do, we're going to release this on you." And so, you know, I think that if people serve, you know, 10, 12 years, if you can't make change in over a decade, I, I don't think I, I want you there. And to the people who push back on that, oh, well, we have term limits. It's called the, the election season. The power of incumbency is so strong. I mean, incumbents have enjoyed over a 90% re-election rate since the turn of the 20th century. And so I think that we need to really just put term limits on Washington, just and, and both on members of Congress, the Senate, and bureaucrats, because this unelected class, people like Anthony Fauci, are destroying our nation. Final question. Team Ortiz or Team Rampage tonight? You know what? I, I got to tell you, if you look at the picture, Rampage looks like he's in better shape. But I'm a big Tito Ortiz fan. I, that, that guy, I'm thinking, is going to pick some real killers. who are going to go in here, and they're going to go for the throat. All right. Well, we have you on record. We'll see if he's.